when 2022 possibly meets 2024 in Iowa. Jimmy Carter, Barack Obama, Rick Santorum, Mike Huckabee, and now Tom Cotton. See how Cotton's using Iowa now to raise his national profile for later. Why he says states deciding abortion rights will not lead to chaos and the Trump question. From your local election headquarters, this is the Insiders with Dave Price. More mass killings plaguing more communities. Aiden McCarthy lost both his parents because of one of those in Highland Park, Illinois last Monday. A man with an assault weapon during a 4th of July parade shot nearly 50 people, including Aiden's parents and grandmother. Arkansas Republican Senator Tom Cotton came to Iowa. He's thinking about running for president. He is not pushing for assault weapons ban or restrictions. So what, if anything, would he do? When you see these horrific mass murders, whether they're in Illinois or Uvalde or some of the past 20 years, what you see is you say, David, that there's never really seems to be a single cause. Uh, there's kind of a series of factors that are present here and then present there, but not present in others. That's why I don't think there's a single solution to them. Um, one thing I think we can do is enforce existing gun laws better. Uh, we can enforce um, you know, regulations and practices uh, about mental health reporting, for instance. You know, it seems that the shooter in Highland Park uh, was a deeply disturbed young man, as is often the case, disturbed young men, it's rarely young women who are doing these things. Oftentimes, I think uh, teachers or, or coaches or school administrators maybe feel constrained in what they can report or, or whether or not uh, it's the right thing to do report it. I think we need to encourage them to do that. I think we also really need to take steps to try to strengthen America's families. Um, oftentimes these young men don't have a father figure in the household. They don't have strong male role models uh, in presence. So anything we can do to make it easier to start and to maintain uh, and to preserve families I think would help our culture a lot as well. Now, unfortunately, there's a lot of gun crime in America that is not just these horrific mass murders. Uh, you know, it seems like every Monday morning we get new reports from cities that are, are have extremely violent gun crime, like Chicago, um, about young kids being murdered or um, you know people being killed randomly uh, by gun crime on the streets. I think we need to take a much tougher approach to gun crime in general. The vast majority of gun crimes. Uh, and violence in this country are committed by repeat and serious felons. And I think we don't do enough to throw the book at them, to prosecute them for those gun crimes, to lock them up, and to keep them in prison where they can't commit more of these are, crimes. Are they getting out too soon? Yeah, for, and especially in a lot of these big cities where you have far left prosecutors who refuse to enforce the law, oftentimes backed by George Soros and a network of liberal Democrats from around the country. You know, they, they, they won't arrest them in the first place. If they arrest them, they don't have a bail system to keep them in jail when they're dangerous. So they turn around and they commit crimes again right away or intimidate the witnesses in their crimes. If they're charged, they're usually charged for something lower than the most serious offense. And when they're convicted, they usually get shorter sentences. And then oftentimes they're released early uh, on parole. So from the beginning to the end, we don't do enough to crack down on serious and repeat gun criminals and violent criminals in this country, often driven by the drug trade. It's a slippery slope for a lot of people when you're talking about, let's, let's say those who've <coughs> had mental, mental challenges of, of whatever it is, and this may be the case with the Chicago young man there. Uh, it's, it's a, there's a gotta be, there's a balance here though, right? Like how, how do you decide this young man's too unstable. We want to make sure he doesn't get a gun and not infringe on any rights. Like that's that's the hard balance here, isn't it? Like it is. is it is a balance, that, and and some, uh, sometimes laws that certain states have passed have not struck that balance appropriately. They haven't given people the opportunity to have due process in advance of the deprivation of any liberty. Um, and it's not just you know Second Amendment rights either. Um, you know we don't have uh, in many states we don't have practices to institutionalize persons who are mentally ill and who need assistance. That's one reason why we have a homeless prob homelessness problem in, in a lot of states. But e even when you're talking about that kind of severe deprivation of liberty, of putting someone in the hospital against their will so they can be treated, so they can get the kind of treatment and the medicine they need to get better and become functioning, productive citizens, they still have some baseline of due process. You can't deprive an American citizen of their constitutional rights without that due process. How do you do, you have two, two little boys at home, how do you talk to them? They're, they're getting to the age where they may see stuff on the news or stuff their friends talk about. How do, you, how do you talk to them about this? I mean, we can't have kids well, scared yeah. to death to go to school. No, we can't, and I, and I don't think we should turn our schools into armed camps either. I mean, schools can take prudent steps 
to make sure that they are safe and secure. Most schools these days, you know, don't leave their doors open the way they did when you and I were in school and, you know, moms and dads could just show up and drop off a gym bag or a lunchbox if someone forgot it at home. And that's probably a prudent step, but, but we shouldn't turn our, our kids' schools into armored camps either. Now, my kids at 7'5 are, are still a little young for that, but as they get a little bit older, I'll talk to them more about the threat of violence, just like we talk to them now about, you know, being aware of their surroundings when they're at a store, if they get separated from mom or dad, you know, not going, going anywhere with strangers. I think there's an age appropriate level for these conversations. Um, and it's an unfortunate reality that parents around the country are having these conversations with kids as they do get a little bit older. But like I said, there, there's no single solution to these mass murders, I think, because there's no single cause. Like I said, there's a kind of a, a series of factors that are often present. We can address each one of those factors, um, but I don't think there's one single solution. You could just say, well, if the legislature in Arkansas and Iowa would act, or if the Congress would act, we would end these mass murders. I, I just don't think that's the case. There are steps we can take, and we should try to take those steps consistent with the constitutional rights of law-abiding citizens um, to, to reduce the likelihood of these shootings. I just don't think there's a single, single solution that'll do it. Do you feel like it's more, <laughs> this is more something for the states to do on their own rather than Congress? Well, law enforcement is primarily the responsibility of the states. Um, Congress can do more. I proposed after the Uvalde shooting uh, an increase in penalty for gun criminals because again, most of the murders in America are committed by persons who already have criminal records who therefore shouldn't own firearms in the first place. But a lot of the mass murder this, stuff has not been, No, that's right? true, that's, that's true, but, but on, on balance nationwide, the number of uh, homicides that are committed with say long rifles pale in comparison to the number of homicides committed by pistols. Um, in general though, yes, law enforcement tends to be the proper uh, responsibility of our states first and, and the federal government second. That's the way our founders conceived it and that's the way it still is today and should be. Next, why he says it's appropriate for states to now decide whether abortion should remain legal.